Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and today I am going to create a bit of an adaptation to a mystery craft along that we recently had over the weekend as a live stream. And this one is going to be sort of a stepped up version of what we did during Mystery Craft Along. So I'm starting with a top folding USA 2 card base. So that measures four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall, folded at the top. And then I have a second piece that's also cut out of white. This measures five and a half wide, um, well technically tall since it'll go this way, and you want to score it at two and a half and at five and at five. So two and a half and five. And with this you just want to um, mountain fold the one line that's at two and a half and at the five inch line you want to valley fold that and give it a nice burnish on both. And the way that this will fit together, it's ultimate, I've seen it called a couple of different things. I've, called, I've seen it called a um, Z fold easel, um, but this is going to be a glue tab and we'll attach that to the front at the bottom of our uh, front panel here. And in fact, let me go ahead and just do that now because I'm going to cover, and the reason why I'm attaching it that way is because I plan to cover that glue tab with some pattern paper. So that way we can hide it and just want to make sure putting glue on the right side, correct side, and all I'm going to do is just line this up with the bottom, get it nice and flush on the two sides as well. And I'll give that a good burnish, make sure it's really well stuck. Okay, so that forms the base of our card. And if you get all of these really well burnished, then it stands beautifully. Now let's trim some pattern papers because I want to get some mats and layers on here. So I will start with this and you can decide if you want this to go all the way to the edge um, or if you want a little bit of your card base to show. I'm actually going to cut it all the way to the edge. So that's going to be four and a quarter wide and these are papers from Cat scrappiness. This one I think is from Cat's Meow, actually. <laughs> um, but let's see. Yeah, it's from Cat's Meow. <laughs> so I cut four and a quarter wide, and in terms of the height, I want to aim for just shy of five and a half, maybe like a sixteenth of an inch shy of that. And the reason is because this is going into where there's a fold here. So we don't need it to go all the way flush to the bottom, otherwise it might cross over that fold line. We still want everything to fold over nice and flat. So that's our um, one layer. Plus if it's not perfect down there, uh, if it doesn't meet up super flush with that fold, it's okay because mostly this card, if it's on display, it's going to go like that. So you're not going to really see too far down in there. Let's get a panel here. And for that, I'm going to use this paper, which is from the um, latest or one of the most uh, more recent releases for the summer. And I think same thing. I think I want this to go 
Yeah, I think I want this to go edge to edge. So basically, four and a quarter wide by two and a half tall. So I am going to cut two and a half. Two and a half. <laughs> Measure twice, cut once. Four and a quarter. Okay. So I think that's all the cutting. Let's go ahead also, and I am going to uh, I am going to go ahead and attach these just so that we have them in place and as we build up the scene that I want to create, we will have fewer pieces, moving pieces, and we can really just focus on can really just focus on the scene at that point. So get these down and make sure the waves are going. I guess they can go either way. Uh, maybe I'll do that. Okay. I do like to try to attach this at the folded end first because you can always trim the other three edges if it's a little bit off anywhere. <laughs> All right, so get that burnished and same thing here. Get this attached. And I'll burnish that. All right, so we've got our patterns in place. Now I'm gonna take the nesting uh, stitch diamonds that's from the new Essentials release. And it's a great set of nested dies. And what I am going to do, or what I've already done, is I die cut it once out of this light blue, but I die cut it with a folded edge at the top. And if you're familiar, this is how you would create a shaped card. So I can show you how you would position that. So you would take your any shape that you want, really. Have your folded piece of um, paper. And you want the fold at the top. And you line up your um, die so that it's actually hanging off it stretches beyond the folded edge and that will preserve that folded edge in order to create your uh, shaped card base and in this case it's not the entire card base that's just going to be one of the elements and in fact this is going to be the um, easel the top part of our easel so I did that to create sort of that base that's going to open and then I die cut another layer to put on top and then that way we get the full diamond with that top because otherwise it lo it's very obviously cut off. So I'll go ahead, I'll add that to complete that diamond. Also gives this top portion a little bit more structure and where this is going to go is right, I'm actually going to line up the folded edge of the diamond with the folded edge of my card base and the reason for that is so that when this is on top it still there's room for it to fold and for that the tip of the diamond to just you know stretch to the back of the card if you tried to put this let's say centered then the tip of the diamond has nowhere to go because it's it's trying to fold against the card base and what's going to happen is that it's just going to put a crease or a fold at the top so you want to line up the uh, fold of your uh, shape the diamond in my case with the fold of your card base and that's that's if you're gonna put this full piece or have anything stretched beyond that but i will center it left and left to right so get that right up to the top and centered 
left to right. And that gives us a nice, um, you could write a message here if you wanted and have that be, since this is going to be meant to kind of put on display, you always could write your message on the inside because you still have that portion. But this just adds another little spot for maybe a um, an additional sentiment if you wanted or that could be actually where you sign your card so that when it's on display, you can still easily kind of have access to to read the little note from the person who sent it. So now we have this top part here and that is actually going to hang out in front here. And what will make this something of an easel card is we're going to actually tuck that into an easel stopper so that it actually, when you stand it up, it actually holds everything together. And that way this bottom portion doesn't like continue to slide down like that. So this almost, this acts as a little bit of a, um, a stopper, a little bit of a locking mechanism. And then you get some really nice, some really nice dimension there. So this is the word relax with its shadow. And I'll go ahead and get the actual word die cut attached to the shadow. And when I attach this to that bottom part of our base, I'm gonna attach it with some foam. And that way there's a little bit of dimension behind it in order for the diamond to tuck behind there, um, right, right at that top part. So I'm gonna aim to just put a strip of foam just along the bottom, really. So we've got that. In place and I'll just use these because they are here. And actually, probably, I think I'll just cut off that much of it. Make sure I'm touching this to the bottom. So I've left room at the top here so our diamond can kind of still tuck into that. And this will be a little bit of an easel stopper. I'll attach that here. Do a little bit. I'm not pushing down or burnishing just yet. I want to just make sure that, yeah, once that's got room to tuck in. So here you can see the tip is barely making it behind there. So what I think I want to do is actually move the word relax up a little. And that's, that's exactly why I didn't want to push down too hard. So just kind of move that up a little. Check again to make sure that this slots in. And... I think I could go up even more, but I'm going to maybe hold off on that because the rest of my scene I'm going to build up will include some additional pieces. So yeah, I think this can actually go up even more. I'm surprised. So I think at this point I might need a little bit of liquid adhesive just to make sure this is a nice firm stick. And I'll still have some wiggle room before that dries completely. There we go. So that's a little bit more tucked behind there. So that's perfect. And now I can start to build up the rest of the scene. So 
I find it helpful to have the um, the mechanics of everything complete and that way you can really just then have some fun building up your scene and I'm gonna continue to sort of check as I add elements to see how how it looks once it's on display because you want to always be doing that that check just to make sure that everything still kind of looks the way that you want so I know that's hard to see on camera but it would look a little bit like that when it's on display and you get a little bit of that dimension so I think we have that's kind of cute and then I want a palm tree. Let's see. That here. And let's see. So I've got my palm tree here. This is from the Tropical Island Getaway. That was from the summer release. And I have the tree itself, and then you've got some layering components that you can add to it, and I've just cut the leaves out twice. Uh, once out of a darker green to be a little bit of a shadow, and I'm gonna aim to, I'm gonna aim to get that exactly matched up with the base layer, because I really only want the trunk to be visible there. And then on top of that, I'm gonna put this lighter layer but I'm going to offset it a little bit just so that um, it looks like the... You could offset it a lot to make it look like a really full tree, but I'm just going to offset it a little just to make it look more like shadow and dimension as opposed to more leaves. So we have that. a little bit of an offset and I'm gonna end up gluing that so now we're gonna start to build our scene so I think I'll do something like that and I'm only as I glue pieces down I'm only gluing it to the diamond because that needs to actually lift from the card base so we don't want to if you if you have stuff hanging off the edge of the diamond that's going to make it look really really interesting and extra kind of dimensional just make sure that you're you don't accidentally glue it all the way down so i'm pretty sure i put some glue on those leaves <laughs> that are hanging off but i'm just going to let it dry so that or just wipe some of it away so that i don't accidentally burnish it hard into the card base but anything that's overlapping the diamond can get can get burnished so do that and then part of the die set there's a lot of different things so there's there's a smaller um, set of palm uh, leaves palm tree leaves which you could layer on top and then there's some clouds, there's some coconuts, and then there's a circle which you could use as the sun. So I've die cut three clouds, I've die cut a... Um, the coconuts are cool, again it can be layered, so there's the um, a set of three here and then there are individual circles that you can also cut out. So those are an option as well and and you can kind of layer layer them up in different colors too so i'll have all of those there now with the clouds what i want to do is as i build up my scene i definitely want some of these to hang off the edge just because i i think it makes it look a little bit more interesting when that's the case so that we have especially since you know all of this is gonna display like that so it's gonna look really cool to have some elements 
kind of feel like they're just floating off the edge. And there are two different size um, or shape of uh, clouds. And so I'm going to try to group them. And I cut three just in, for that sort of rule of three, but I'm going to overlap two of them to form a little bit of a cluster. So there's that. Maybe something like something, or maybe I'll just do something at the top. Let's see, where does this cloud live? <laughs> Hang off here. Hmm. Maybe I just need the two. Okay, we'll revisit that. Let's now let's work on the coconuts. So I'm gonna just layer these coconuts up. I die cut it once out of a dark brown and then a second out of sort of that same tan color I used for the sand here. And that way I get a little bit, I can offset how I layer these up to get a little bit of um, shadow on there too. And we can put this up in the trees. I didn't get enough glue. So really fun, and we're just about just about done. I'm not gonna stamp an additional sentiment on the inside here, but you definitely could because there's um, plenty of space in there. And so now, once this is standing up and on display, it'll look a little look a little bit like that. Stands beautifully, and you get, I love the effect of things kind of hanging off, and you do have all of, from the side, it'll, it'll look a little bit like, look a little bit like that. So really fun, dimensional, um, displays really beautifully. I don't know if I want to use this last cloud here. I feel like I don't really need it, so I'm think I'm gonna go ahead and just call this one done. So that is the double, um, well I've heard one name for it is the double um, Z fold easel card. Um, so really really fun. Pretty easy to put together and displays really beautifully so I think I'm gonna make some Christmas cards with this look and I think having a big Christmas tree sort of in the place of this diamond would be really would look really really nice and for the holidays <laughs> for folks who've watched my uh, videos around the holiday season or when I'm doing my holiday card crafting I am always aiming to uh, get onto the mantle <laughs> So I want to get my holiday card onto the mantle of uh, the recipient and I think cards that just naturally display really well are always, I feel, a good candidate. So I feel like uh, putting that little extra something into my holiday cards just to uh, make sure that I'm in the running for that mantle space. <laughs> so <laughs> I think this is one of those cards that is going to be great for the holidays. So I hope you give it a try. If you do, please do uh, share your makes in my Facebook group. It's Crafty Fun with Friends of LV Handcrafted. It is a private group, so anything that you share in the group, only members who are accepted into the group will be able to see it. Be sure when you do join the group that you answer the questions and you accept the rules because that's one of our ways of protecting the community and making sure that it's a 
inspiration space that is positive and friendly and encouraging of crafters of all levels. And so uh, we do screen for that very um, closely. So remember to accept the rules when you join. And if you are interested in um, some of these really fun, the summer release die set, Tropical Island Getaway, Relax uh, with Shadow. Those were from uh, the summer release and then the Nesting Stitched Diamonds are from the um, most recent Essentials release. So if you're interested in checking out those and um, the other sets that released along with those, you can expand that description box below and you'll see links to everything that I used. Thanks so much for catching this video and until next time, happy crafting and have a fabulous day. Bye.